I just got back from one of the toughest conferences I've ever spoken at. And I'm wearing the t-shirt right now. Check it out. So if you're wondering where I was speaking, I was speaking at a conference called Shutterfest. For the last 10 years, I'm wearing a 10th anniversary swag here. Shout out to Shutterfest for some great swag, by the way. So 10th anniversary, I've been going for the last three years. And this year I was chosen as a speaker, a newbie speaker. So let me tell you how the owner and how the team works at Shutterfest, just so if you don't know. So when I first went, my good friend Andre Brown, photography you'll see a clip of him here he said chip you need to come it's a good conference i was like you know dre you just don't go to any conferences and you know he was speaker friend then another friend of mine kai marie asked me to come i was like okay i'll go i heard of it so i went and the first year i went in 2022 i was overwhelmed it's like what in the world is all this going on here it shoots all times of the day and night partying drinking, fussing, cussing, but in a good way, you know, if you, if you like all that stuff. So what I'm saying is that the whole conference is high energy and it comes from really the top down, right? Sal Sincata, some of you know him as uh, uh, he's has a wildly popular YouTube channel here and his wife run this conference for 10 years. They've been doing it right. He even proposed to his wife at Shutterfest a few years back. And this year, when I went as a speaker, they had a few stipulations where, and and, and I liked it because it's, um, I'm recording this video and I don't even know if I'm even chosen for next year. So you don't get paid for the first year. All other speakers speak three times, okay? Two hours each, 90 minutes each. So they're pretty much there the whole three days, four days. And then, um, they're accessible the whole conference, the speakers. Okay, they're just accessible. So I was like, okay. And then they give you this great big banner that you have up, you'll see. And that's either great or bad if you're an egotistical photographer. Of course, we all post them on our stories when you see a banner of yourself. Ooh, well, I got a banner. All right. That being said, that's just called, we call it slight flex there, right? So that's a good thing. But then when I say the audience, the audience is so tough I want to say tough audience takes on the, the how can I say this in leadership you know a company takes on uh, the personality of their leader if their leader is brash Sal is a brash and he knows Italian he curses I don't really curse a lot uh, hopefully not at all but anyway he, he drops F-bombs and S-bombs and all types of stuff but that's him some people can't handle him he's loved but then he's hated and he likes that clearly he likes to be the not villain but just who he is and he doesn't care because guess what he's making a lot more money than a lot a lot of photographers are, are doing so <laughs> but he's a damn good photographer too and he's a good uh a, a good coach and mentor so personally i haven't taken any of these classes i'm just telling you what other people have told me but i've met sal um, I've talked to him many times and I have found him to be just a straight up guy. At least I know what I'm dealing with instead of somebody who pretends that they like you and then they go behind your back. So that's how I feel about the guy. I have no problems with him and you are who you are. Don't change it. Heck, I'm in my 50s as well. I'm around his age. So just go for it. Do what you got to do. So anyway, so as a newbie speaker, you're given and you know this before you sign the contract. So it's no that you don't get paid. You don't get travel. You have to go on your own dime. But if they had 30, 80 speakers and 35 ish, maybe were new. I was one of the newbies speak one time. Then they'll send a survey out and see if you were any good or, and then I guess they'll invite you back. So at the time of this taping, uh, I just got back from Shutter Fest. I'm back home and um, we'll see if I got chosen. If I don't, Guess what? I'm fine. I have good reviews. Uh, the people seem to like him. Uh, but what I mean, why those classes and why the audience is tough is that um, I'm in a couple good speakers uh, classes because I want to see how they deal with the audience from a speaker's perspective, because there's a difference between uh, sitting in a class and then sitting in a class for, of another speaker and see how they deal. So Gary Hughes, 
He used for Yeti photography out of the Orlando area. Really good speaker on headshots, took two of his classes. And the thing that he came, he's another one that drops those F-bombs and stuff like that. He's just good speaker and good information, gives you all you got. But he said one key thing. He said, you will not overtake my class. He gives people time to go in to be, you know, but he will basically say that if I'm on a mic and if I don't have a mic, I'm standing up, I have a class. If you want to be a teacher, you will fly. And then you teach in class. Because invariably, there's always somebody in the class, of course. And I used to be a, a school teacher. There's somebody in the class, especially when you're dealing with adults, especially photographers and videographers. I don't know what it is that somebody always knows more than you. Well, why aren't you teaching the class then? Okay, anyway. So there's always somebody that knows more than you. You think that you think that they know more than you. So he shut it down. And he shuts it down really well. He tells people, you cannot film. This is Gary. You cannot film. You cannot do like all of that stuff. So with my class, I had some people coming and commenting. There were people I could see they were, and I was nice about it. And, you know, that's just me. But they were trying to overtake the class a little bit. I, was, I just had to redirect them. So when I say that, when I go to conferences usually and speak, you're the expert and you don't have people trying to tell you what to do, especially if it's technical. I was talking about getting behind the scenes. My topic was getting behind the scenes, B-roll, editing, mobile editing. So I'm showing something that is more technical in nature. But then I'm showing and telling um, different gear I use and people have their opinions on it. Uh, so it was it was just interesting. So the 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 audience is tough. Uh, I, I think they take oh they they can overtake your class if you let them, but they're fair. At least even if I get bad reviews, you know sometimes people take it personal. I I don't really care because I know I did my best. So if I don't get invited back to Shutterfest, guess what? I spoke to WPPI Imagey this this conference this conference this like a lot of photography conferences all over. And if people never hear from me again or just on this YouTube channel, I'll be just okay. Okay, this is not my livelihood. I'm doing this because I want to help photographers. You understand? My ego is not in this at, at all. So if I don't ever get invited to speak at any of these conferences again, I've done it. I'm okay. But you have to understand that I wanted to speak at Shutterfest because it's more of a challenge for me. Okay? I'm not into speaking just to fill my ego. It's to help other photographers. And this group, like I said, I'm wearing the shirt. We shoot, you learn, you party. And pretty much that's what you do at this conference. It's a tough one. And you can be shooting three in the morning and get back up at seven in the morning. People have carts just of stuff. I've never seen anything like that because I've been to WVVI, I've been to imaging. People shoot, but people don't shoot like they do at Shutterfest. And just the quality and the mindset of people that are there are just totally different. So anyway, you can check the conference out yourself. I said you should try it out to see if you're in. It's always around Easter, the Monday after Easter. If you're in the area, try it out for yourself. Tell me what you think. If you've been to Shutterfest, it's like people have Shutterfest disciples. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. They're like, you know, I hate Shutterfest or I love Shutterfest or it's great as like, I'm starting to turn into one of those disciples for Shutterfest. I didn't intend to, but I'm telling people like, because it's in St. Louis, right? And I'm sorry I'm rambling on, but it's on St. Louis. It's not like it's in Vegas or it's a nice place like Florida or Mexico. Nothing with St. Louis because I'm from Baltimore. So let me not even talk about cities, right? <laughs> but you can take the entire Union Station and shoot anywhere. I mean, you can't have people dangling from balconies and you get this whole rent a model stuff rent a human. I don't even want to get into all of that stuff. But the basis is you can shoot anywhere, anywhere, anytime. And there are people that live in the St. Louis. I've done some weddings there in the same venue, a wedding there in the same venue. And people was saying it's, you know, a couple hundred bucks to shoot in there. And it's a nice hotel. It's a pretty fairly nice hotel. And you can do what you like. But like I said, it was the hardest conference because of the preparation for myself. I had an extremely busy month of March. First week of April, I had to turn around and go there, get myself together. I felt like I did okay. I got a couple great reviews, but I know where I can improve. And I know I'm always trying to get better, not only as a speaker, but as a photographer, as a presenter of information. So hopefully this helped you. If you made it this far in the video on this blog, it means you're interested in what I offer. And what I'm offering now is just subscribe to me. Tell somebody about this channel. 
Uh, my name is Chip, and I'll see you in the next video. And I hopefully I'll see you at Shutterfest. So I'll be there. I like it. I'll see you at some other conferences too. Peace.